Hello gatherers and gamers and welcome back to another unfiltered game night where we're going to be playing another little game show game called the magic number and like our previous video if you haven't seen that there's a link down below in the description what we're doing is we're having these two guess the prices on cards I've picked and I try and throw in a little bit of spice here and there make you guys twist and turn just a little bit the last game we played we had Alicia as our champion with four wins and max at three or five, five and four. Five to four. And we have another set of nine cards out. And the value here, I've cut it down just a little bit so the numbers will be even more tighter. It's anywhere between like a nothing card, it's so like 10 cents, all the way up to about a hundred dollar card. And you guys are going to be guessing between the numbers, uh, you know, 10 cents all the way up to a hundred, but nothing over a hundred dollars, okay? Um, also, another trick in here is most of the foils here in these sets are actually an increase in value. There is one card that's the same value regardless of whether it's foil or not, or it's like very minimal, but the rest of them actually do have an increase. So just to give you guys a little bit of a heads up, because these guys are still newish gamers to pricing magic out. At least she's been playing for about five to six months here. Max has been playing mm, most of his adult life, but in periodic little little bits here and there, and hasn't really focused on the pricing of cards, more about the playing of cards. So you guys at home can also play along with us as we have Alicia here and Max jump back in for the magic number. Are you guys ready to begin? Let's do this. Maybe. Yeah. Here we go. Bam. This one here is called a Fedgegriff. <laughs> Fedgegriff. It's a flying hippo. It's a legend. <laughs> this is from Alliances. It is a colorless, white, blue, and a green. So four mana. And what you're going to get with this guy is a 4-4 four, four with three unique abilities. You can pay one white to give the hippo flying. And when you do that, you're also going to choose an opponent and give them two life. Um, what does Summon Legend mean? Uh, it's just an older card, so instead of it saying like Summon Legend, Hippo, Horse, whatever, it's a legendary creature though. Oh. So this is a legendary creature. It's it's a hippo, I believe, in the rules text. I'll have something down there to show you guys. But yeah, it's a legendary creature, basically. So it could be your commander if you want it to be. But yeah, for one white, you can give him flying and give your opponent, one of your opponents, two life. Uh, the next thing you can do is you can pay one blue to return it to its owner's hand and then target opponent draws a card. So if you want one blue, take it back to your hand and then let Max or I draw a card. And the final thing here is you can give the Fedger Gift Trample until end of turn, but if you do, you put a Hippo token into play under target opponent's control and that token is a 1-1 one, one green creature. So Trample gives your opponent, any opponent you want, a 1-1 one, one green Hippo. Uh, flying is going to give your opponent two life. And then the last one is blue. It's going to let you turn Fedrigriff to your hand, but a player will get to draw a card. So this is what I guess in Commander they would call like a group hug type of a commander. And uh, you guys are going to go ahead and try and guess the price on Fedrigriff. If you have any questions, you can ask. It's been a while since I've actually seen this one, but I have seen it. That's interesting. Why would you want to give your opponent all that stuff? Why would you want to give your opponent all that stuff? Yeah. Because you're a nice person. No. Maybe, so there are certain things like giving him flying and giving you two life. If I had a card that said target player loses life instead of gaining life. Oh. Or whenever I can return this to my hand and whenever um, I can give the target player a draw a card. Whenever that player draws a card, they lose life. That kind of a thing, I suppose. And then the other one is giving them creatures. Maybe there's a reason why you want to give them creatures. Whenever a creature enters the battlefield on your opponent's side of the field, they have to sacrifice a creature. Mm -hmm. So there are reasons, there are combos that you can add with Fedrigriff to make it a unique commander. All right, go ahead and write the price down. Yes, interesting. This is from Alliances, and the year on this guy is 1996. 1996. Hippo. Hippo, legendary creature, commander. I'm not really sure with this one. Not really sure? <laughs> you have a good idea? I mean, I'm probably wrong considering I always forget the value for cards even when I have seen them and discuss them at length. Well, before, but... the last time I looked this up, it was worth more than it is worth now. You guys already wrote your numbers down, yeah. yeah. Uh, so it surprised me when I looked it up again. Uh, cards have dropped recently, so the prices have dropped for some of these older cards, but uh, it's still worth more than a dollar, so we'll see what you guys picked. Go ahead and reveal your numbers. The magic and number is, that's a backwards, that's a zero one. 
There you go. Ten. <laughs> Twenty-five. Twenty-five. Okay, let's see what the Fedgriff is worth. It is fifteen dollars. So he's closer by five bucks. Mm -hmm. Fedgriff. Fifteen dollars. Congratulations, Max. One point up on the board. Victory is mine. Yes. Uh, what do you guys think? Why? Why? Why ten? Why twenty-five? Etc. Um, it's an interesting card. I mostly put it up because it's old. It's old. Okay. <laughs> it has versatility for group hug situations and the combos. I use similar combos with my white black deck for. Uh, life gaining and life destruction. Yeah. So. So this card here is actually old. That's the reason why it's worth money. Um, yeah. And additionally, there. This is um, a very unique commander. There's very few commanders that do this kind of a thing where it gives your opponent yeah. stuff and you try and hurt them for helping them. Mm -hmm. There is another card card called Questing Fedrigriff, which I believe is worth nada. Um, and it does the same thing, but it has better abilities. Mm -hmm. It still helps your opponent, but not as not as this is extra help and less cool abilities, but it's old, so it's it's worth some money, I guess. It's not printed that, that much, I suppose. And it's only printed once. Um, it hasn't been printed, it wasn't printed that much when it came out and people didn't like it. And so, you know, there's just not very many of them around. Mm -hmm. All right, let's go ahead and flip over the next card here. This one here is something you guys have both probably seen, but do you actually know the real value? No. This is Aura Shards. It is a green, a white, and a colorless. It's an enchantment. And it says, whenever a creature comes into play under your control, you may destroy any artifact or enchantment. So you play a creature, destroy somebody's artifact or their enchantment. Now, is that global? So it's going to hit everybody or just your opponent? Whenever a creature comes into play on your side of the field, you choose one artifact and it gets destroyed. And it's you may. You don't even have to. So. I know it's really good, but I don't know how much it costs. Oh. Well, I'll give you a hint. It's more than five cents. Wow. <laughs> it's less than $100. It is a good card, yes. Um, but the thing is, did they reprint it a lot? Is it something that uh, you can easily get? It is an uncommon. This one here is an uncommon. But I don't know. We've seen the like, last video was Car Clan Ironworks, and that was like 35 bucks. So, okay, you guys ready? You got your magic yep. numbers? Reveal. Shooting a little high, but... 25. 50. 50. 25 and 50. Our shards is actually $11. Or ten seventy-five to be specific. And that would go to Alicia. You guys both overshot the moon there. But our shards is an excellent card. Yeah, it's very good. It's really good, but I don't know, like how much it costs. Yeah, yeah. This is an excellent card. It's used in most white and uh, green creature decks, and it gives you tons and tons of value. In fact, your cat deck has it, right? Yes. Is there another picture for that? Um, there might be, but it's probably an even more fancy, expensive version. <laughs> so this is the cheaper one, I believe. I have to look it up, but maybe I'll have a link somewhere you guys can see, uh, or in the, in, the, in the images down below. It's Ugly. Yeah, it's kind of nasty. But I mean, it's supposed to look like a creature coming out of a portal. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's it's a card. <laughs> okay, you guys ready for the next it's one with card. one and one? It's tied up. The stakes are even more intense now as we reveal Voice of Resurgence. This is a card that costs one green and one white. It's a creature, it's an elemental, and it's a 2-2. Two -two. So two mana for a 2-2. Two -two. Whenever an opponent casts a spell during your turn, or when Voice of Resurgence dies, put a green and white elemental creature token onto the battlefield with this creature's power and toughness are each equal to the number of creatures you control. So whenever an opponent casts a spell during your turn, or whenever this guy dies, you're going to get a creature. And that creature is going to be equal to the number of creatures you control. So maybe they play a brainstorm at the end of your turn, and you're then going to get a free creature that is at least going to be a 2-2. And then if they play another one, you'll get another creature that's now making them both 3-3s. Three it's so only two mana for a 2-2. Two -two. Why at least a 2-2? Two -two? Um, because equal the number of creatures you control. This is a creature on its own, and then if there was another creature, that would make it two creatures. So this, this guy here would be a 2-2. Two -two. And then if there was three creatures, both of them would be a 3-3. Three, three. And then a 4-4 four, four, would make all of them 4-4s. Four, so the more creatures you have, the stronger the creature that this guy produces is. Mm -hmm. And he can produce at least, at least he'll produce one creature equal to the number of power and toughness equal to the number of creatures you control. 
provided it dies into the graveyard. So, all right, you guys got a, a number? Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah? Okay, what's the number? Fifteen. $5.15. Um, all right, before we get into it, why $5, why not 50 Um, Because it's not very common for someone to cast a spell during your turn. No, about a counter spell. Yeah, but that doesn't really happen that often. Hmm. Okay, when, when it dies, it gives you a creature too. Two for a 2-2 two, two that gives you another creature. Hmm? Yeah, it's pretty good. Yeah. And you went 15. I That's overshot right. the last card, so I I toned myself down a little bit. It has a lot of great uses, so it's probably going to be more than 15. Yeah. Yeah, I'm like $2 for a 2-2. Two, two. I would say it costs more than $2. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you would be right. In fact, it is actually two dollars and seventy-five cents. <laughs> so yes, it is. Now remember, though, uh, this card here, when it came out, it was really, really priced up. That people thought this was going to be amazing, and it, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure, if I remember correctly, it was used quite a bit. But it has since fallen off because when you're playing this card, people know what's going to trigger this. Yeah. And they can then play around it. Giving your opponent's choice whenever it comes to magic is never a good thing because they're always going to choose the better choice. So they're going to be like, is it worth me countering the spell and giving her a creature? Or is it worth destroying this creature? Can I exile this creature? It's still a very good card. It's two for a 2-2, two -two, which is fine. It's vanilla. But yes. that ability to trigger additional possible creatures is great. The only problem is people know when they're going to happen. So you are correct. You are closer. Two to one. Two to one. You ready? Ready for the next oh. one? All right. Here we go. Lord of Tresserhorn. This is from Alliances. It's from the same set as our wonderful little hippogriff here. Uh, and this one here is going to be one colorless, a blue, and it's going to be a red and a black. So four for a 10-4. And it says, whenever it comes into play, pay two life and sacrifice two creatures and target opponent draws two cards. So a lot of negative. Um, it says, uh, the effect to prevent or redirect the damage cannot be used, whatever, to counter this loss of life, whatever. And it has pay one black and regenerate it, which means if it were to die, you can pay a black and it will tap to the side there and it will not die. So it's kind of almost indestructible. Not really, but it, it kind of gives itself protection from being destroyed if you have a black mana. But the problem is, it's, it's a four for a 10-4 that has regenerate, but you're gonna have to sack two creatures, uh, and that's pay when life. It, when it comes to the battle. Yes. So paying life, sacking creatures, giving your opponents cards, but you get a 10-4 that has regenerate. It's a big creature and the regenerate's nice. It's also an older card. This is from uh, 1996. Not super old, but you know. Maybe it's the same as the Fedge Griff. I don't know. Maybe. All right. Reveal. Eight dollars. Eight dollars. One dollar. So why eight? The fact that it does have regenerate, once you do get the initial cost out, it is easier to keep on the field to cause havoc. And what about the negative effects? Drawing, giving your opponent two cards, giving them uh, two life, or making you take two life and you have to sack two creatures for yeah, it. it. It's pricey, but I mean, a 10-4 four for four is not too bad when it comes down to the power scaling. With the regenerate? Yeah. Um, yeah, it's kind of expensive, and it feels not nearly as good as the hippo one, which was like not super expensive so that's why i just went with one dollar and they're from the same set yes. so you're kind of yeah it's not a bad idea he was worth a pretty penny but he's since dropped off and he currently is worth five dollars actually and you went eight and you oh, went eight. one you're actually closer so lord of Tressorhorn is gonna go to you he was actually quite more, more he was more expensive at one point not by a huge amount i think he was like 15 dollars at one point um, but mainly for the same reason as Fedrogriff. Uh, it's a card that hasn't seen a whole lot of reprints. It's a weird card with a unique ability. I've never seen someone run it as a commander and I probably never will because it has mm -hmm. such a negative drawback. Every time you play it, you're basically giving your opponents super value. And the, with those cards, they can simply return it to your hand or they could destroy it potentially by exiling it. Nevertheless though, it is a cool card and I wanted to show it off to see if I could trick you guys into betting up really high. 
But we're done with the alliance cards. No more, no more, no more freebies. <laughs> now for a real card. Bio Visionary. This is what I call a secondary wind condition card. It's one blue, one green, and a colorless for a 2-3. And it says at the beginning of the end step, if you control four or more creatures with the name Bio Visionary, you win the game. So if you copy this guy three more times, and the end of your turn, you have it, you win. Also remember, too, in standard, you can play with four of these guys in your deck already. It was definitely a much more used card in standard than it is in ADH. You think so? Oh, yeah. Well, the only way you can get multiple of those is if you have clones. In, in EDH, yeah. Yeah. In command, in, in, in standard or in modern or whatever, you can just simply have four in your deck plus clones. That was why they were used pretty heavily. So this pricing then. could be based on modern or standard or legacy or EDH. Okay, you guys ready? You mm -hmm. feel confident? No. You? <laughs> Somewhat. All right, reveal. Three dollars. One dollar. <laughs> <laughs> okay, why a dollar? Because it's not very good for commander. What about if? What about standard or modern? Or? Well, I don't know. I don't play those. Yeah. So <laughs> I'm just gonna guess that it's just not super relevant for that reason. I don't reason. know. I don't play those. Well, what if you thought about if you had four of these guys in your deck? Do you think it'd still be pretty good? You think it'd be better? It would be better, but still, you'd have to like summon them all. And, and, and keep them all on the against, field. Yeah. Or copy them. Yeah. And you said five, so you went the higher route just a little bit. Three. Three. Yeah. It's, it's literally for the same bit of having the win condition of four of them on the field at the same time. And even if you could have four of them in ADH, that's four out of a hundred cards. Even in standard, four out of 60. I mean... It's possible to get it it's off. It's possible. Okay, so... It's let, hard to keep up with... Con with the continued congruency. All right, let me let me go and break the the uh, suspense. It's thirty six cents, <laughs> so Alicia's got it. This card is what they call a secondary win condition. Most secondary win conditions suck, very hard to get off, and most of the time worth nothing because you almost will never get on the field. Even in standard and modern, it's it's not a played card. It cannot be used. It's too easy to get rid of. It's too hard to get enough copies in the field. There's too many responses. It has no protection. It's just a two three. If you can manage to pull off the combo somehow by copying it multiple times, you're going to be lucky. It's maybe played in EDH. I've probably never seen it played in really anything, unless you're making a joke deck. Um, it's a cool card, though. And uh, I think of a new, if you're a newer player, you might think this would be a really amazing card. But yeah, most of the win-the-game cards are not great and very hard to pull off. Mm -hmm. Actually, I know a couple ways of making that work. I'm no sure you could it. try, but yeah, it's it would be challenged. All right, you guys ready for the next one? So, Serious business time? <laughs> All right, here we go. This is a foil now. So this is a foil. This is a pre-release foil. And it's called Rurik Thar the Unbowed. So he refuses to bow. <laughs> it's a legendary creature ogre warrior. It's going to cost six. One red, a green, and four colorless. It's going to give you Vig, Reach, 6-6. Six, six. If it attacks, uh, it must attack each turn if it can. Reach means if a flyer is gonna hit you, you can block it with this guy. He doesn't have flying, but he can block flying. So what if he's the one attacking? Uh, then he doesn't have flying. Then he's just on the ground. Doesn't mean anything. All reach means is if a flyer attacks you, you so can it's whack only it. relevant for blocking. Yes, okay. correct. It's only relevant for blocking. It blocks flying, it doesn't tap to attack. It has to attack every turn, but whenever an opponent casts something that isn't a creature, they take six damage. Or sorry, whenever any player a, a play something that isn't a creature, they take six damage. So if you play a soul ring, six damage. Yeah, that, that hurts. Yeah, it's a six, six for six, vision reach. It has to attack every turn, which is a big beefy beater. And whenever somebody plays something that isn't a creature, six damage right to the noggin. And it's a foil pre-release card. Now, most of these pre-release cards, sorry, most of the foils in, in here are going to be worth a, a little extra or more extra than the average card of its type, but there is one foil in the deck that is worth the same amount, or roughly the same amount, as the as the non-foil, so. Feeling feeling confident? No. How about you? <laughs> I, I, I've seen a lot of cards like this that 
seem like they would go for more, and they are literally tittles. Tittles? So. Okay, reveal it. Two. Ten. Two and ten. All right. You think he's closer? I don't know. You think you're you think you're on it? I think I'm a little closer on this one, yeah. Rurik is, I wanted to get it down to the precise number, 35 cents. This card is actually a really cool commander. It's really yeah. cool, and it's used in commander, in fact. It's actually a really good commander card um, in casual formats. It has the ability to shut down your opponent's decks because they're playing all these creature, non-creature stuff, soul rings, any mana rocks, any ramp, any of that kind of stuff, any spells, and they're taking six to the dome. And if they play five cards, they're taking 30 damage. And that's a lot. Just yeah. leaving him on the field, protecting him, and playing a full creature deck with this guy is going to destroy your opponents. It's really that's powerful. What I figured. I'm like, just have a deck of all creatures. But it's newish. It's a pre-release card, which means I gave him out to everybody at the pre-release. It was really, really common. Uh, it, it's just not worth a whole lot. They reprint. Mm -hmm. They've got a few reprints on it. I don't know what a pre-release card. Uh, it's just when you. It's just like when you I don't know if they still do them now I don't think they do and I don't know if they did them then but usually it was like you'd go to this convention hall and they just had a ton to just give out to people oh yeah uh, usually it meant that these cards got worth very very low value so it's like a promo that wasn't very good <laughs> um, but yeah it's just not it, it's not played all that much but it is it, it is a fun cool commander card so uh, it's gonna go to you Max at three and three now Max has got Fedrigriff Lord of Tressaran both of the Alliance guys and then Rurik. And then you've got the more interesting ones, Aura Shards, Voice of Resurgence, and Biovisionary. I thought the voice would throw you guys off because I thought you guys would think it was worth a lot because it generates a bunch of creatures for two, but I was not able to sneak one through. Okay, <laughs> all right. Next one here, three and three, it's close. This card here is called Corona False God. Corona False God. This guy here is... Really, really pretty. So I'm gonna explain what this guy does. It's one of every color plus a colorless. So six for a five, five haste. And it says at the beginning of each player's upkeep, that player untaps Corona and gains control of it. And remember it has haste too. And whenever Corona attacks, creatures of the type of your choice, the person who owns it, is going to get plus, is going to get plus three, plus three. You're running an elf deck and Corona comes to you, all your elves are gonna get plus three, plus three, and she's gonna swing um, and she pumps up all the creatures. But the problem with this guy is it's going to pass to each player around the table. So you're going to have to find ways to deal with that. Are you going to have her goaded so that when she passes to other players, she can't hit you? Are you going to run a tribal deck that keeps her in play? Are you going to run a make her a super Megatron that just hits everybody else with the goad? I mean, there's some unique styles of play with her. But remember, she's also a foil, okay? And this is from Scourge. It's an older set. How old is it? Uh, this is from, and this was before they started printing foils like crazy, 2003. So this is the foils that you would get from this set was roughly like one every other or every three packs or something like that. And they could have been a rare, a common, an uncommon, etc., etc. So... There's, there is that, I suppose. <laughs> All right, so you like the creature? No. You like the creature? No, I, I looked into this one just for a fun commander to play, but it's just, it's too chaotic. Okay, but it's foil. Does that it matter? It is foil. It does, it does make it look nicer. Is it worth more, though, because it's foil? I would think yes, because it's old. Okay, okay. What do you guys got? Let me see. $5. Five $75. bucks. $75. 75 That is a huge difference in price. Let me see. Let me Only see here. because it's an old... <laughs> Corona is $97. If you were to get this non-foil, five bucks. I knew it. Yes. It is an old card. Uh, Old-ish, right? It's pretty old. It's in the mid to, to the early stages of Magic. And it's really, it was really hard to get foil. I actually have nine of these, and or I have eight of these, and this one was in the middle as the foil. So I had like a whole page of Corona because it was just such a silly, stupid card. But yeah, at some point they stopped printing foils as as like they stopped like holding on to printing foils and making them super sparse and just started dumping them everywhere. You can buy an entire pack full of foils. This was never the case back then. If you got this, it was really rare. Yeah. You were really lucky. 
and yes, 95, uh, basically 100 bucks for the Corona False God. So yeah, but it, you would have been closer if it was the non-foil. So that can, that's, this is a little bit of magic history for your trivia, I guess. All right, now we got four to three. It's, it's, it's getting a little back into her favor once again. And this, was this going to end the same way last episode? Did? I don't know, it could. Okay. I kind of figured if it was not a foil, it would be cheap. Uh, it's fair. It's fair, yeah. Because it's old. Because <laughs> it's old. Now, remember that some old cards, most of the original old cards didn't have foils. Foils didn't start until the Urza's set. So it was like, I don't know, like four years after Magic started? All right, we have Tezzeret, Agent of Bolas. Now, fun trivia before we get started. This was one of my favorite decks I played in Standard. I owned four of them. I owned four uh, foilies. This one here is a foil as well. And I ran this up against Jace the Mind Sculptor, um, like the squadron, uh, what is it called? Like Cobblade type decks. I ran them against Balakut and it, it held its own. It was a pretty cool deck. Um, so this is a Planeswalker. It's for four, one blue, one black, two colorless, and it gives you three loyalty. It puts plus one, it says look at the top card of your library, and you, so reveal the top five cards of your library, you may reveal an artifact from among them, and put that card into your hand, and then you put the rest on the bottom. So top five, is there an artifact? Take that card, put the rest on the bottom. That's what the plus one does. The minus one makes an artifact become a five five um, artifact creature. So just straight up target artifact becomes a five five. And then the ult, which is actually only four, so it's a really low ult cost. So you can play this guy and uh, it's, it's three loyalty and then the next turn it's four and then you can ult it. And it says target player loses X life and you gain X life where X is the number of artifacts you control. So if you have in standard 10 artifacts and you pop this guy, they die straight up without taking any other damage. Um, yeah, and it's a foily. This is one of the, is still they the point. With 10 life? Uh, t no, if they, it's, it's, it's um, X life, where X is twice the number of artifacts. So if you have 10 artifacts, it's 20. Oh. Yes. So what I would like to do is I would put him into play, I would proliferate, increasing his counters, counter from three to four, and then I'd ult him on the same turn. And if I had 10 artifacts, they just instantly oh, die. Yeah, that is a nice do way to do that. Same turn? Because when you play um, a Planeswalker, you get to plus him up one, right? Uh -huh. Or minus. Well, there's a card called Proliferate, or there's cards that have Proliferate on them. And oh. you could proliferate, which gives all the things that have counters on them that you have, or anything have, that has counters, you can put a counter on it. So loyalty would oh. go from three to four, and then you would use that and blow it up, okay? Now, now just that like long story, uh, it doesn't mean the card's worth anything, especially now, it could have dropped in price or whatever, right? But it is a foil, it is a card um, that had seen play, and may still see a little bit of play as well, I believe. And it's foily, foily, foily. Did I mention it's foil? It's shiny. And I like it a lot. And you know me, I like very expensive cards. <laughs> Trying to trick me? I don't know. It's not really a trick. I just, this is a card I liked and I Mike wanted to. Mike is always I'm great for the bluff, double bluff, I think it's triple bluff. Worth. Okay. What I think it should be. You should always bet what you think it's worth, not what I think it's worth. I'm not gonna lie. I'm, I'm, I don't know if I'm being tricky or not, but... You are. <sighs> reveal. 20. 50. 20 and 50 bucks. Um, so let me get this, let me explain this really quick. This card actually was about $50 a year or two ago, or a while ago, before it, the market dropped. And uh, I don't know why it's lower in value. I, I Maybe somebody in the comments can let us know. But right now, Tezzeret, Agent of Bolus, is $25. $25 for the foil, but it was, it was like 50 or something like that. So that's still pretty high, I guess. Uh, I, mean, I bought them, they were only like three or four bucks at the time. And you said 50 and you said 25? I said 20. 20? You're closer, so you got it. Tezzeret, one of my favorite, probably, probably actually my favorite Planeswalker of all time. I thought it was just so good. I drop it, proliferate, give it a counter. I've got 10 artifacts, like glands or just wellsprings, garbage artifacts, and I blow you up instantly. And what do you do? Nothing, you didn't counter Tezzeret. Love Tezzeret. <laughs> yeah, I've got one of these guys. It's a fun card to play. But I like that you said 50, because you would have been right. Just the markets kind of went down a little bit. This card <laughs> is so good. Okay, all right, all right. I'm done, I'm done gushing over Tezzeret. 
It's just, it's so, like it's so nice to be able to defeat people who are running super, super expensive decks back in the day by just dropping something and they, they just weren't prepared for it. They didn't know what to expect, you know? At least it's maybe not my fun. play group. Maybe your play group. Yeah, probably different. I don't know. Okay, the next card here. Uh, I thought you were doing nine cards. Um, oh, it was supposed to be nine. I guess I have ten. <laughs> what if it's a tie? Well, um, luck, well, I don't know. You have four and four. Yeah. So that's eight. So this is nine. So luckily we have an extra one. Because if you got... Oh, oh yeah. That's that didn't make any sense oh, at all. Yeah. Uh, super bonus tiebreaker round. If we get... I'm down. Yes, that's what this is. I was supposed to do nine. Why is there an extra one? Is there an extra one? There is. Oh, well. It is what it is. We're doing 10. You did extra homework. <clears throat> World. Do it live. Okay. Chromium. <laughs> Chromium is two colorless, two black, two blue, and two white. So it's two, four, six, eight mana for a seven, seven. $8. Yeah, eight. For a seven, seven, flying rampage two. And I believe rampage two means after you attack... For each creature that blocks it after the first, this creature gets plus two, plus two. So if you block it with a 5-5, five, five, the 5-5 five, five dies. If you blocked it with a 5-5 five, five and a 2-2, two, two, that would give this guy plus two, plus two, making it go up to nine. And thusly, he would kill both of them instead of dying. So it gives him more power the more creatures block it. It punishes you for pump block. Sadly, yeah, it punishes you for multi-blocking. Sadly, during your upkeep, you have to pay a black, a blue, and a white in order to keep this in play. So it is two, four, six, eight mana for a seven, seven flying rampage two. That makes you pay three mana every turn to keep it in play, otherwise it gets sacrificed. But it is an older card. What year? Uh, the year is 1994. And if you listened and you remember my our last video, this there, there might be some clues that give you a little bit of an idea. A few, a few tidbits of clues. I forgot. Uh-oh, then you're in trouble. Okay. Hopefully this will... Hopefully you guys have a good idea what it's got. I say it's expensive. 160. This is going to be close. So you're right. You're both right. This is from Legends. It's got the black border. It's got the samurai chopped off podium. Uh, it's a terrible card. Yeah. But it's really old. Wasn't printed a whole lot. Legends is a very, you know... I have, I, mean, I have a lot of Legends cards, so that's why you'll see some of them in these videos. Um, but yeah, great cards. It, 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 yeah, some of them are, yeah. I mean, Callie runs a deck that's commander based on that. So what do you guys, you, got, you said 60 and you said 100. The correct price is we'll round up by 15 cents and say $80. But if you round up by the 15 cents, that would put it at 79.85. Yes, so you are technically closer by 15 cents. 15 whole cents. Wow. It's seventy nine eighty five. All right, now you have a chance to break this and make it a super tiebreaker. But yes, fifteen cents putting you in the lead. So we have a chance. You have a chance to come back because I made this a bonus round just for you. Bonus round, bonus card. Okay, here we go. The last one, the most important one. This is. It's called a lightning helix. Ooh, I've never actually seen a lightning helix. What is that? Full arted like that. It is a card. Yeah, it's a straight up card. Um, I need I need the rules lawyer to go ahead and look up what Lightning Helix does too. It's been a bit, but it's one red, one white. It's an instant, and it does damage and gains you life. I believe. I think it's three damage and three life. Uh, but I don't want to be incorrect. Um, what year is that? That's a good question. Let me look. This the year is and no cheating. But uh, if you're watching, 2006. As soon as this pops up, off of TCG player. Yeah. Lightning Helix deals three damage to yeah. target creature or player, and you and gain, you three, gain life. three life. Okay, I was right. I just didn't want to be incorrect here. But yes, you gain three life. So it's it's two mana, three damage, three life. Uh, there are two cards in Magic that one of them says. As an instant for one red, do three damage. It's a very popular card. The card it's called Lightning Bolt. And it was very, very um, expensive. Well, pretty expensive back in the day, but it got reprinted like crazy. Yes, it did. Um, and then this white here, the three life for one, one white. It's pretty common as well. Um, but this card might be a cheaper one. And if you didn't look at the pricing I for this not. one, the other one doesn't matter. 
this one is different than all the rest of the Lightning Helixes because it's fancy. Yeah. Okay. I, and to make it fair, I was only focused on the text okay. for the cards. Good. That way, I was right. staying fair. All right. So you got your pricing. If you got yours already, huh? What are you thinking? Oh, well, we got to wait for him, actually. Wait for him. So, yeah, it's, it's a full art card with no text. It was one of the first um, types of cards to do this. Yeah, I have a ton of these, and I love this card. But do you have this specific I type? I do not. So this, this is, the is first unique. first time I've actually ever seen a Lightning Helix like this. Yeah, so this technically, if I gave it away after you write this, write, write down your number, then I'll, I'll go into a little bit more detail before we finish this up. Okay. You got your numbers? Good. This card here is like 50 cent or something like that. It's not super expensive. It was reprinted like, it was reprinted quite a bit. Uh, it is a used card, but this specific card puts it above the rest of them. The answer is how much though? Reveal the magic number and let's see if Alicia can come 12. back in the game. 75. 75 and $12. Who do you think is closer? You think she's got it or you think you're closer? No, I, d I highly doubt it's that expensive. Okay. Because Lightning Helix in general is not a massively expensive card. All right, let me let me go ahead and pull up my magic cheat sheet. Oh, you guys, you guys, you guys feeling nervous? No. Nah. Seventeen dollars and forty-five cents. So yes, you are correct, Max. It is, it is in the twelve-dollar range. A little, little over, but it's not a bad guess considering it's. I'm Considering it's fancy, it's something unique from uh, the, I don't know, ancient times of magic. Not that ancient. It's actually not that old. No, it's, it's just not one of the original like full art type cards without the text. Some people hated those cards and other people didn't. Let's go to the top up. All right, so there you have it. We have four to six. Max got the bonus card that I accidentally threw in. I was supposed to do nine. I don't know why I did 10, but if you were to look at the, what was supposed to be the last one, uh, then it would have been one by 15 cents by, by Max. It would have been really, really close, but we threw in the extra lightning helix. I don't know why. It is a special from us to you bonus card, I suppose. Um, would you, how'd you feel about this one here? I think these cards were harder than the previous ones. The multicolor, the do they feel like similar? Do you like see a pattern? Um, I don't know. Maybe similar. Maybe similar. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The last one, I never seen a card like that. As like, what is that? A token? Oh, because it looked like a token, right? Yeah. yeah. I thought it would be an interesting one to throw in there because people would be like, oh, that's something new, probably very expensive, or at yeah. least somewhat expensive, and it is more expensive. Right? Any token like that, generally speaking, is going to be a little bit more. Not always, secret layer, but ones that you can actually you get from like promos or media, stuff like that back in the day, was actually pretty expensive. And we also learned that cards like uh, Corona, these old foil rares that you just couldn't get all that often, could be big bucks, even commons and uncommons from certain sets in these older formats, especially if they were played or are played at all go up dramatically in value. A Clark Clan Ironworks, in the previous video we did a Clark Clan, that one went from $35 to $100 if you had a foil one, just because it was foil. Yeah. And they weren't super, super hard to get back in the day. You could get them, I have a couple of them, but yeah, it made a big difference. Whereas nowadays the foils are not valued as high because they print more of them. You couldn't specifically right away to buy foils. Tesseract Agent of Bolus, this card is roughly four or $5, but with a foil, jumps up in value. And then, of course, older cards. I tried to throw you guys off with the Lord of Tressorhorn and the Fedgegriff, making you guys think hundreds and hundreds of dollars because you have something like this Legends card, the Chromium, which is actually literally almost $100. These guys were a little cheaper from Alliances, and they were funky with bad abilities. So I was hoping you'd go way high or way low on them when they're actually like mid-range $15 cards. So... That's the game. That's the magic number. Congratulations, Max. You did it. You succeeded. You, but I doubt it will happen again. So you better enjoy your little victory lap here because the next time you're going to get it owned. Thank you also for watching. I hope you guys had some fun with the magic number. Seeing us do some pricing for magic cards. We'll do another magic number video at some point in the future. We'll do maybe this like playlisty thing of every week. We'll maybe put something out. Or we'll also do what they call the... Uh, uh, staple or stinker which we'll, we won't call it that because that's some other channel that does that but it'll be like stuff that we use and stuff that nobody uses <laughs> the the game 
Thank you guys for joining us. I hope you had some fun and thank you guys for watching. Make sure you go ahead and like, comment, and hit that subscribe button to see more videos like this. If you like Magic the Gathering and want to see us pump out more videos, then, then you should let us know because mainly we do board games on this channel, but I wanted to do a little bit of a side thing uh, for Christmas and talk about some other stuff that we enjoy playing. All right, guys, that's all I got for you this time. And as always, I look forward to seeing, seeing you guys, guys next time. time.